G'day guys, I'm Michael from Direction Plus. We've brought our Nissan Navara here. It's an MP300, 2018 model. It's got about 100,000 Ks on it now because it is a rep car that we use. It's got a two inch lift plus our gear all over it, which is all about protection. So pre-filter, pro vent catch can, and throttle controller and transmission cooler. I'm Lucas, the owner of Springs 4x4 Park. And day one, I brought out the infamous Battle Axe, which is a GU Patrol. 4.2 litre turbo diesel manual and just a weapon of a truck. We've brought up today with us our Direction Plus Nissan Navara. It's a 21 model. It hasn't had a lot of modification done to it. We've put a two inch lift on it, bigger tyres, and that's generally it. Other than that side of it, a little bit of performance side of it, we've put a Direction Plus throttle controller on there and also the Direction Plus pre-line bus filter kit as well as the ProVent oil separator. So I got the invite here from Simon and we're here at Springs, my first time here, and I'm blown away. This park is amazing. I had no real expectations of what we were coming to, but the hospitality we've been given, quality of the tracks, the facilities, I'll definitely be back. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for bringing the crew out. Great to be here with you guys. Thanks for having us, Simon. So this is your first time to the Springs? First time here and the place is looking amazing. Not a hard drive out of Brizzy. Easy two hour drive, straight through Cunningham's Gap and uh, and not too long before you're here, straight out past Warwick. And you've been here five minutes and you've done two water, three water crossings already. Can't complain of that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So Michael, coming up to a little bit of a rocky, tricky section here, you've got the throttle controller, the TR Plus. Yeah, it's down here and we've just adjusted it into crawl mode at level five and that's because I want to take some of the sting out of the throttle and make it less jerky as we're bouncing over some of these rocks. How does it actually do that? By intercepting the signal from the throttle to the ECU and then modifying that to tell it where the throttle actually is. Sweet. This gives that bit more control. Sure does. So typically the, the nav struggles with lag and we turn them up so that we, we take you know the, the lag out of the throttle and it's really responsive. In situations like this, we don't want to be jerking around and lurchy, so we've got the opposite mode, yep. which gives us the ability to use a lot of throttle. Yeah, excellent. So it's basically desensitizing the pedal to take away that kangaroo effect of like bouncing over obstacles and give you a bit more control. Exactly right. And as you can see, we're just cruising through, even though my foot's not real steady on the throttle. Yeah, and as you said, a nice controlled, even response from the throttle, no matter what happens with your foot. Correct. Got the 300 walking through that all right. It's done a good job. How's the Navara going, Simon? Yeah, Navara's kicking along no problems at all. Seems to get quite well. Did you reset your throttle controller? I've actually tried it on uh, custom just to see what the feel of it is like. And how'd it go? Probably need to back it down a little bit more, just a little bit, but it, it was quite good actually. There was no sharp jabs or anything, so it was quite good. And that's what it's about sometimes, depending on your vehicle, it's about coming out here and actually trialling it, using different settings and seeing how the vehicle does respond. Yeah, agree. So we went up to the second gear hill. Awesome time driving in there. All of a sudden, Lucas was in front of us there and he made it look quite simple, actually. A couple of minutes and we were straight into it. Second gear climb, massive ruts, big wombat holes. I led the party with the battle axe and the GU. Fortunately, I've got front and rear air lockers from ARB, so I've whacked those bad boys in and just motored on through there like it was nothing. So my first track here at 
Springs 4x4, we were thrown straight into it after lunch. We rolled up at second gear climb, big rollers to get in there, a couple of wheel lifts just to get in. I don't know if that was a shakedown thing from Simon or just to see how we were ready to go, but geez, they threw us straight into it. We went up there a while, diff locks were in, the nav did a great job, pretty much pulled itself up the hill until we got to the T-piece. So part of second gear climb, we've got the two Navaras here, Simon Berman, I was driving one and I was driving the other. Day one, I hit every obstacle first, then he was following. I cruised up this hill, I say cruised, but it was a good challenge, but went through without too much difficulty in the nav. And I thought, oh, this shouldn't be too bad, we'll give this a bit of a crack, but unfortunately, my diff locker hadn't locked in properly and I, um, I was certainly struggling getting up the hill. Simon came through in the Nissan Navara P300. He was having all sorts of dramas with his rear diff lock and getting it into full drive and everything else. Simon followed us up and couldn't get traction. Lifted a couple of wheels, wheels wouldn't engage. Clearly we had an issue with the diff lock. Struggling and wheels lifting and spinning tyres and throwing mud. And it was really exciting. Uh, yeah, it won't work. I don't reckon you're in low range. Cause you Heaps of revs. I, I reckon that's why it's flashing at your full drive. Mm -hmm. Still flashing? Yeah, on yeah. that side. Ah, right, okay, let's pop it into neutral. Yep, put it back into high. High four will be fine. Yep. All the lights stop flashing. Uh, I'll turn diff lock off. Turn the diff lock off, yep. Nothing flashing? No. Beautiful. Now drop it into low range while it's in neutral. Once he nutted out the ins and the outs of the issues with the four wheel drive not locking in and the diff lock not locking in, he was away. Woo. Nice driving. So once I reversed back, I drove forward again, finally got it to lock in. Mate, we went up it. It wasn't easy, but it was a hell of a lot easier than trying to do it in your two wheel drive without your rear differ in there. Little bit of trouble there getting Simon through second gear climb. Initially he was in high range, it didn't swap over into low range. You've got to remember, whack it into neutral, let it click over, stop the lights flashing on the dash, and then you're in proper low range. We've got Tyler coming through now, let's see how he goes. <laughs> you know how much flack I'm going to get calls from that? <laughs> that one comment. Yeah. <laughs> Lucas goes the chicken track. Oh. So we continued all the way up to the massive rock step face that's on second gear climb. Everybody took the chicken track. We peeled out early, including the battle axe running his road tyres. We've made it to the top of second gear climb and we're faced with this amazing rock ledge. Now, as I said last time, Lucas had a crack at that. Yeah, I'm not putting the other guy like that. No. Holy moly. <laughs> we saw what happened to him and we all decided the exit was a far more appropriate choice. We went the chicken track, which was about 40 degrees, I reckon. Unfortunately, our vehicles aren't really quite set up to do that sort of stuff. So we obviously took the chicken bypass and did it quite comfortably. Diff locks in and away we go, we're gonna go and have a bit of fun. I gotta tell ya, I'm glad Simon's decided to take the chicken run. Yeah, that's a hell of a steep track, that one. Easy piece of cake. A little bit of wheel spin. I mean, the crawl mode setting four on the Traction Plus throttle controller. It, it actually handled it very, very nicely. I don't know if I'd like to be in beast mode on that one. I think it might have been a little bit too stabby. That's done well. It's done very well. 
We're going to take this chicken track. Do you reckon we give it a go with no lockers? First gear or second gear? What do you reckon? No, I want everything on. <laughs> <laughs> Make it more exciting. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty steep. Wow. Even though it's like the chicken track, it's pretty blooming steep. <laughs> I just hope you know where the road is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be so cool to come up there. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler knows how to wheel, wheel actually. All right, now there's three exits out of this club. I'm going to take the steep one, but that is vertical with a big rock step. And Tyler's going to have a go at it, but man, wouldn't catch me on that. This will do me. Come on here now. Get up. Good. we got plenty of vertical space then. This will be interesting watching him go up that hill. Oh, There's one guy down the back who's still gonna have a crack at that. Let's see how he goes. Now this, I gotta see. We went up that way and Tyler in the 37 on his patrol, he went the bonus line. Rock steps about this high. He made it look easy, no doubt all about that. He's quite a confident guy. Yeah, he just treated that like an animal and sent it straight up second gear climb. Just made it look like it was a paved road, which was awesome. You made it look easy. Yeah, twin ARBA lockers and 37s. Straight up, hugging the right hand bank. That's the line. Challenges out there, guys. Come to the Springs 4x4 park. Try and follow Tyler. See how you go. Look, without the right equipment, you've, you've got to know your vehicle's limitations. Certainly your own limitations, but especially your vehicle's limitations. Had we attempted that, who knows what could have happened. Could have been in a world of hurt. Well, this is a fantastic park. 700 acres, I think the boys were saying before. And it's just four-wheel drive track after four-wheel drive track. Man, I'm impressed. Four-wheel drive is heaven. Absolutely. How easy did Tyler make that look? Right. Twin locked TD42 on 37s. That step, I think, was about chest height for me, and he just walked up it. It's unbelievable how successful four wheel drives are at this sort of terrain, but how much power you get by amplifying that going into low range. Oh, different world. And that's just a short hill climb, but on long, continuous hill climbs, are you building up temperature in your transmission? Absolutely. If you're working slow speed, no air coming through, transmission gets hot particularly if it's beach work. If you're under constant load on the sand or anywhere soft, mud, those transmission temperatures build really quickly. So what do manufacturer's handbook say about driving on sand? <laughs> Anything that is not at continuous speed is called extreme conditions. And they say that that will halve the transmission life and absolutely put punishment on the vehicle. It's just not designed for that. Carrying loads, towing. How does that affect the warranty? Well, they don't tell you anything about the warranty. Warranty for the car should cover the entire period. But if you are a serious four-wheel driver or want to tow loads, heavy, stop-start, transmission cooler is absolutely the way to go to keep those temperatures down. Prolong the life of your transmission fluid, stop it breaking down, and keep the vehicle running smoothly. It's funny the people out there that think that you buy a vehicle off the showroom floor and the manufacturers made it as best as they can make to go off-road. But that handbook comment, don't drive on sand, don't drive on tough conditions, because it's not built for the typical conditions we go four-wheel driving in. You add ball bars, you add tyres, you add suspension, you add all sorts of gear to improve what your full drive can do to make it cope with the environment. The reality is that you've got to add to the transmission as well. Absolutely right. That's what we buy them to do it, and you get out and use them, but they don't tell you in the showroom. That's something you find out afterwards. So on the trip with Simon and I from Direction Plus, we've got Alini. She's our marketing coordinator, social media gatherer. She's the person behind the camera for our gear. Jack of all trades, really. So we're headed for Toyota Hill, but in between, there was these four bog holes. Top of Snake Pit, Main Street, there's three or four big bog holes there. Chocolate block, because we've just had a bit of rain, so they're chocolate block full of water. Looks like chocolate milk. 
That didn't look too bad, so we set up a bit of a crew to, to create a bit of a splash. As soon as we came into the bog hole, Michael was in front of me actually, so Michael went first. I sort of had a bit of a look where his wheel placements were, as, as well as how deep it was, and it wasn't overly deep, so I basically followed his wheel tracks. Dropped straight through it, popped out the other side, not an issue whatsoever. Over the radio comes a message. He claims that there was more to the message than what actually came over it. But all I heard was, <laughs> Simon's version is a little different, I'll let him explain. There was, there, was a, there was a little bit of misunderstanding there. Once I went through, I was about to say to Michael, I was gonna say, give me 10 bucks, Mick, if you uh, spray your lady. But unfortunately on the UHF, all the other boys behind me heard was, I'll give you 10 bucks if you wet a lady. So unfortunately for a lady, Tyler heard that. <laughs> oh my. Alini was there, life on the line, body on the line, sledgehammer and Tyler, next level. Hit it, oh, I don't know, I, I, I think it might have been third gear, on the soot, flat out and just absolutely drenched her. <laughs> Poor bugger. Alini got drenched, absolutely soaking wet. We needed a towel, it was that bad. She looked like someone had poured a chocolate milk all over the top of her head. That was quite funny, felt sorry for Alini but that was certainly a very funny moment. <laughs> But I tell you what, she was in great spirit. Yeah, she was laughing and grinning about it, which was which was really, really good to see. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I think she enjoyed the whole the whole shenanigans as much as the rest of us did watching it. Was it worth it? Yeah. For me. <laughs> After that last hill climb, Simon, you made a little bit of a comment about Tyler, just one little puff of smoke. Fuel is such an important part of the diesel engine, isn't it? Oh look, it certainly is, and what's even more important is it's got to be clean fuel. There's a lot of dirty fuel out there and a lot of water contaminants out there, so my recommendation is always to fit a pre-filter for water separation just to help keep the water out of your diesel system. The factory fuel filter isn't built as well as it should be to cope with the actual impurification and the water ingress that can occur. Yeah, that's right. Look, the original filters are designed to really filter out the particle contaminates in that diesel, but not so much the water. We all know what it's like if you get a gut full of water and you come around injector system, it's going to be what an expensive little exercise. Fuel certain things are pretty good here in Australia, but it's not perfect, is it? And you can get water and other contaminants in the fuel. A lot of people don't think about it, but when people are driving on roads and the roads are wet, if their engines are running and the fuel tank breather is open, it's actually sucking in the water mist that's been brought up by the roads. Now it's pretty important where you put your fuel filters. They go obviously in line. Do they replace the factory fuel filter or do they work with it? No, we actually fit them pre, so before the existing filter, because we want to prevent any of the water, or well, that possibly may be in the system, from getting into your original fuel system. Some people say, oh yeah, but my vehicle's already got a water alarm light on there, that will tell me when the water's there. Yes, it does do that, but the problem is it tells you that the water's there, it's already there. It's not coming into it, it's already there. So that's the whole idea of going to a pre-separator. So you can stop it from going in there prior to it entering the system. So what do you reckon so far? We've gone up, now we're heading back down. Fantastic. You, you reckon when we get to the bottom here, we swap seats, you can drive? Okay, if you don't want your car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anne, here we are, Toyota Hill. Oh my God, I think it's too. steep it is. <laughs> I think it's too much for me, I think you better drive. Oh, um, okay, I'll look after you. <laughs> yeah, well, let's do it, let's do it. Well, she drives the white rhino, so. She can handle a manual. My question is, can she handle Lucas? <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> I don't know if I can get the seat close enough. <laughs> Here we go. She's making it look bloody easy. Walking up that hill. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. I tell you what, it feels a bit sketchy in the passenger seat. Now you know why I was worried. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. Good job. What do you reckon, Simon? I reckon this is awesome. We don't swear on TV, but we can that out. Oh, you're doing well. You're doing really well. Sorry to bring you out here when you've got purchase orders and proposals to prepare. Yeah, look, someone's got to do it, mate. Someone's got to do it. It's a team effort. They see that big boulder that's sticking yeah. out. It'd be great if you go to the right of that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and up we go. Nam's doing a great job. We've got just enough clearance, I think. Toyota Hill. A couple of missions going up it from Direction Plus. So, I mean, that was way easier than we thought. So, when you're ready, you're up next. Yeah, this is fun. This is good fun. Bit of bouncing. The throttle controller is on Sport 6. I thought I'd just give a little bit higher setting so when I put the foot down and need it, I'm going to have instant power and that's exactly what I've got. So you're in the driver's seat this time, Anne. How was that? It was amazing. It was just a bit terrifying and daunting to start off with, but I had him beside me telling me what to do, so I was pretty happy. Did you volunteer or did someone... Lucas coerced me into it. <laughs> he said, you can do it. <laughs> And you've done it with flying colours. And I didn't even scream once. That's no good for the camera. Well, in all honesty, I don't think you were breathing either. No, I wasn't breathing. That's why I'm puffing now. So after Toyota Hill, we made our way over to Love Hill. It was a fairly long climb with some rock steps on the way up, but gee, when you got to the top, it was really worthwhile. It's a very, very special view up here. I think you guys will be blown away as we crest the top of the hill. Cactuses everywhere. I've never seen so many cactuses in my life. Man, the view, as soon as you hit it, and you've got to see it to believe it, as soon as you drive up, you just look all the way around you, and it was just phenomenal. You had Warwick over here, you had the Great Divorty Range over in front of you. It just looked absolutely spectacular. It's been a privilege to be out here. I learned a great deal. I would encourage anybody to bring your cars out here. They're stock four-wheel drives, big rigs, comp trucks. But please, as part of the community, let's all stick together and support these places. Thank you for tuning in to another big episode of Simon Christie's Four Drive Pro Tips. Jump onto fourwheeldriveprotips.tv for more information and make sure you follow Four Wheel Drive TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit and YouTube. I'm Simon Christie. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you've got a four-wheel drive, get it set up, get out here and use it. We'll see you next week.